Good morning. So today we have a question for you. It's Valentine's Day. And why does love sell both in nonfiction and fiction? So welcome to Reality Coaching for Writers. Hello, Eddie. Hey, Diana. Nothing but the real stuff. No fluff. So no, no fluff. And, and today it's we're just going to give you the facts like Joe Friday and Dragnet. <laughs> Yeah. So what what do you think the answer is to that question? Why does love sell? Well, I think it's always on our minds because God created us for relationship. Yeah. And he he designed us. Uh and we are we spend our lives seeking the very thing through human beings that we're meant to receive from him because he initiated his love to us first. Yeah, I would I would go along with that. I was thinking of uh, you're right. We're created in his image, and he he is love. And um, and then I, so the next thing that happens is he created Adam, right? And Adam had all the animals at his disposal, including the dog, which is you know one of the most lovable creatures on the planet. You know, you can kick a dog, and it still keeps coming back for more love. It's just weird. Right. But but even Adam was lacking something, right? He wasn't, yes. wasn't complete. And I think that probably goes to well, the heart of a lot of reason that love sells is because we're just not complete. We're, we're not put together completely. Yeah. Yeah. God designed us that way. And there's no need for apologies. It's just that so often there's that saying, look, we look for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> <laughs> and that shows you the um, the whole reason for the birth of Hallmark Channel and rom com movies and <laughs> yeah. and dating sites and all the things that come with that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's absolutely true. I think we I think there is a hole in our soul that that only love and affirmation and um, putting up with us for who we are. You know, it's not a trans, uh, it's not a uh, transactional kind of relationship. I think all that drives us to find love somewhere. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I've talked about this before. I'm absolutely convinced that one of the reasons the Hallmark Channel is so popular is because the husbands have done such a bad job of loving their wives. You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I'll tell you, I wanted to start out just talking about. A number one bestseller. It was published in 2009, and there are 74,000 plus reviews on the book. And it's called The Five Love Languages. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the best books for married couples to read. But it has actually, it is still, I mean, a number one, you know. So to have a long standing, uh, selling history and then spawning there's love languages for your teenager, love languages for the single woman, love languages of God. There's for married couples, you know, and, and it just like we talked when we were talking last about what sells, what publishers are always looking for. There's a love language book written for every age group. Hmm. And so, you know, you have that topic and then you just break it down and, and bring it out for every age group. But I read that book years ago when it first came out and I found it just transformational uh, for me as far as relationships with everyone, my friends, my family, but I taught Sunday school and I found that that book really helped me relate to each of my Sunday school students. And when I started applying the talking to them in their particular love language, they opened up. They just opened up. They just felt seen. They felt heard. And we, they still keep in touch with me, you know, years later. They're young adults and married, and they still keep in touch because you know, I was able to communicate to them in the way that they perceive love best. 
So maybe the, maybe one of the things we ought to do uh, after the after the day's episode is you and I to start working on a nonfiction book, the love languages for editors, because if we could get that one down, <laughs> we could sell everything to an editor, right? You know, that'd be a bestseller. <laughs> well, that brings up a good question of why you need to get yourself to writers conferences and meet some of these people because they're all different. Like even in, let's pick um, Ravel, which is um, Baker Book Publishing House. There's the Baker side, the Ravel side. And um, in all of those editors, in all of their imprints, each of them has their own personalities and things that they like to acquire. So even though they're in the same house, they each had their own thing that they looked for. Yeah. And that was in their wheelhouse. So there wouldn't be one answer for that. We'd have to have, you know, uh, five editions of that, <laughs> of that book. Yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to know. And th th there is actually a, a, a underneath truth to this, which is you have to know what the editor likes. Yes. Um, and if yes. you're writing, a, if you're writing in a genre and the editor happens to be the acquiring editor in that genre, but they don't really read that genre they just have to be the happen to be the acquiring editor you're kind of at a disadvantage because you may write a really good book in that genre but you know they're going to go eh, i don't really i didn't really get it you know reviewers do that all the time they don't really get it but you know it may mm -hmm. work for the genre so it, it would get tough you know i was sitting there thinking diana uh when the holy spirit came and gave gave the gift and gave the, the gift of speaking in different languages mm -hmm. um Apparently, so many of us didn't get those languages of love that didn't get dispensed out correctly, I guess. Or it's more, well, more and I, I think because there's work involved. And we, we want everything to come easy to us. And there's work involved in every relationship, even with our relationship with God. Uh, there's work involved as far as how deep do we want to go with him? Yeah. And yeah. when you right? Yeah, when you were talking about this, I was I was thinking about the the formula for the romance, the romance mm -hmm. novel, romance screenplay. Um, and we're we're not gonna delve into that deeply today, but you know, one of the things is all in, in every good romance, we're not gonna call this a love story because that's a different genre, but in romance, there's always a secret. There's always a hidden part of somebody's character their past or something they don't want revealed right that's key to the story and if it's not there you really don't have a romance i don't think you have a romance or if you do it's not going to be very probably well received there has to be something that we hold back the character holds back which mm. is goes back to the garden the very first thing that adam and eve did was they said we, we, we didn't do anything wrong we're over here hiding but we didn't do anything wrong right um, so it's that secret. We have to keep our secrets to ourselves, and that's part of the love part of the love process. We don't well, remember. and then if you want that deep relationship with somebody, an intimate one, uh, you know, we think of husbands and wives, but just our relationship with uh, with God, it's it's being transparent and honest and trust. You know, there's a level of trust. Um, and in publishing, you've got to trust your editor. You've got to trust uh, your instincts, what you feel and believe that you're called to write about. But um, and so the level of trust in a relationship determines how deep and and intimate the relationship's going to get. The friendship, you know. Um, but I. I heard somebody recently, and I, and then we'll move on to love in books and movies um, and nonfiction and fiction. But I heard somebody uh, recently talk about this. And then I found out when I was researching the five love languages that uh, Gary Chapman also addressed this. But God has different love languages. And for us to get to know him better is to understand his love languages. And his primary love language is worship. And it's what he asks for. 
And so when we give him what he asked for, just like in any relationship, Eddie, if your wife asks you for more quality time and you refuse to give it to her, that is going to hurt your love. But when God asks us for worship, it, when we give it to him, it deepens the relationship and we get more from it. And it was interesting because God knows we are all different. So he gives us all different ways to worship him. Some people, if he said, clap your hands, shout, dance, you know, sing. And all these, he even talks about writing, you know. And so I just love that. I just wanted to share that because I thought that was beautiful. And worship does not need to look the same from all of us, but he does ask us to worship. Yeah, I, I can believe that. I mean, I, I, clearly that's <laughs> it's throughout, of all, throughout all the Old Testament. You don't see it as much with Jesus, um, but he was here for a little bit of a different purpose when he came. Right. Um, right. But even even in the way Jesus carried himself, he was worshiping and everything he did, always everything he did was worship. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Eddie, do you recall a movie or a book, which a lot of movies are books first, <laughs> and then they are um, made into movies, but a particular uh, genre, I know you said you and... Uh, Benny, your wife, watch homework movies together. Um, and we know that formula, but is there a, a different book that you read somewhere throughout your uh, lifespan that spoke to you about love? No. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> no. I don't read love stories. I, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I mean, like I said, love stories are different than romance, but. Um, the romance stuff, it, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I like rom-coms because they're funny. You know, they, they've got the humor to it. So I'll watch those. But there aren't really that many good rom-com novels out there. It's hard to find. I mean, I write in that genre. And it's hard to write in that genre. It's hard to find yeah. good, good stories in that genre. Because most of the people I think that are reading rom-coms, they're, rom they're reading for the romance side of it. That's what they're <laughs> looking for, right? And so when you come back with the humor and the levity, people are like, no, you took me out of the, the story, right? But, but coming up with the funny. So it's, that's a delicate balance. It's much easier just to write straight romance. Um, and I could do that if I wanted to. Ron Benray and I, we talked about it for years. We could, we could have been bestsellers in romance if we'd have just put our high heels on and our skirts and just got down over the you know, box of tissues and just started crying. We could have done a really good job with romance because we understand the formula, right? Right, right. Right. Well, and I'm thinking of one of your titles called Bahama Breeze. Yeah, and it, it was that, a love story. It, it was, was a love story. It yeah. was a love story. And it's, it, it turns out it's the, the actual genre now, I, I find out it's the second chance genre. So if you're looking for that genre, it's called the second chances. And this is where people knew each other in an earlier part of their career, life or whatever, and they get back together late in life after life has happened and that's what happens in Bahama Breeze it's you know he, right he, he lost his high school sweetheart and he wants to hook up with her late in life when he doesn't have much time left right and that's the premise of the story which sounds like a downer but the way I write it's not a downer it's just funny you know because of who the characters are but that's a really popular theme always because um so many of us look back and go I missed an opportunity here oh yeah yeah. You know, and we regret that. So romance plays into that role. Right. Yeah. And I think of um, some of the titles that I've uh, seen recently when I'm scrolling through Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime and Roku channels. And one is Must Love Dogs. And, you know, one of the things that sells is the love between a human being and animal. Those stories are very popular. And I think, Eddie, you hit on that earlier is because they're devoted. They, they're such a, they're, the love from a dog is often, we say, unconditional, you know. 
Um, I mean, if you just give them a little, they just come at you with a lot. And so I, to tie the love of a dog with a romance, then you're getting a double hitter. You know, you're going to pull in the dog lovers and you're going to pull in the people that are like a, a love story. So um, that's one of the, the, uh, I was sitting here, yes. when you say that, I was sitting here thinking about uh, you've got Marilyn's Tom Hanks and May mm -hmm. Ryan. And Brinkley, the dog at the end, is the connection. I mean, we don't even think about it. We pass through it. But, but that dog is the thing that brings the two people back together. When he calls the name Brinkley and Brinkley starts running and then Meg Ryan realizes that's the guy. You know, that's the <laughs> connection. And it's a dog. Good old dog. Yeah. It is, it is. And I think of, um, you know, yeah, yeah. So I, I, we had a technical difficulty. So I'm filming on my phone and my phone, I have uh, notes, has, has my notes for this, this conversation. So um, I'm going to keep staring at the phone, hoping that you continue to see me, but I'm going to I'm going to look at my notes here for a minute. Eddie, go ahead. And if you have a, something you want to add, um, go so, ahead. The only thing I would add about the, the love part of it is I, I may have shared this years ago. Uh, we learned this from a, a, a couples, not therapist, just couple counselor. I guess Benny and I went to him one time, a guy named Tracy Manus. And I'm not even sure if Tracy's around anymore. But um, he said that the way God wired us um, was to leave us incomplete on the subconscious level. So on the conscious hmm. level, conscious level, we know who we are. I mean, I can I can explain to you who Eddie Jones is and give you all right. the facts about Eddie, and everybody would go, "Yeah, that's Eddie. That's that's exactly <laughs> the way he is." But on the subconscious level, I don't really rec I don't really see myself. Right? I can't because it's it's inside and I can't see it. And there's not a mirror that I can look into and see the subconscious. <laughs> And Tracy said, what happens is the way God created us is because we can't see the subconscious when our opposite comes in front of us, that perfectly reflects back the unconscious half of us we can't see, we immediately recognize that's it. That's her. That makes me complete. And he said, uh, that's, that's the way God created us so that opposites would be attracted to each other so that the two become completely whole because otherwise you've got a really large wheel and a really tiny wheel and you go through life off balance but when you have two opposites attracted then they become a complete whole for each other i love and, that and he said that's the way god wired human beings to be wow. to be attractive to complete each other he said and then the problem becomes after you become bonded related say i'm going to stay with you then you have to find a way to live with each other <laughs> because you have and, almost nothing in common and love languages help that help if you understand the other person's love language you know that's going to help um all right i'm in my notes here and i'm thinking about um there's a new release in fact, it's up for pre-sale, I think, right now. But it's called The Love Stories of the Bible. And even the Bible, you know, highlights love stories. And I also um, want to recommend, oh, that, let me tell you who that's by. It's actually Fox News Books, believe it or not. Um and it's a series they do, and this is just one, but it's biblical. Can you still see me, Eddie? No, you dropped off, but that's okay. You, you'll be back. Okay. <laughs> but it's biblical. Let me get back here. Um, biblical lessons on romance, friendship, and faith. So it's the love stories of the Bible. And then... Uh, one of my favorites is Love Does by Bob Goff. And he's a kind of lighthearted uh, writer. And um, he's he's coached many people over the years. But he's a New York Times bestseller. 
And this book, Love Does, is all about how love should um, express itself by with acts. You know, it does something. When we love others, it causes us to do something. So it's a great book for small groups. I highly recommend it. I've done it with a small group at church. And it's just um, talks about the subtitle is discover a secretly incredible life in an ordinary world. And it's all through looking for ways to express love in, in culture today. So definitely that one. Now there's one that was even turned into a movie, but it's the love dare. Have you read that one, Eddie? No. And the movie that came out of that was Fireproof. And it was based on um, this book, The Love Dare. But a lot of um, couples do that. But there's one book that just totally surprised me that is out there. It's called Love from the Very Hungry Caterpillar. It's a children's book. <laughs> You've heard of the one, The hung Hungry Caterpillar? Eddie, it's a classic. Ah, oh gosh, I've had to read that a million times with um, Curtis and with other children that I've babysat for, but they actually have one focused on love and it's love from the very hungry caterpillar. And it's very simple. It's a little picture book on love, but I wanted to give you the top three award-winning finalist romance novels in the Christie Awards. Yes. And one is, one's called All That Really Matters by Nicole Deese, D-E-E-S-E. -E -E. And another one is In Search of a Prince by Tony Shiloh. Shiloh. And the third one is Until Leaves Fall in Paris by Sarah, S-U-N-D-I-N. Sudan. And these are um, three of award-winning no romance novels, but they're finalists in the Christie Awards this year. So there's some romance novels. Does, does the Christies have a have a love category or just a romance category? I think it's it's romance. Okay. Well, no, I'm sure they put them both, you know. I don't think they separate it. Eddie, how about you help people understand? Because people come to me all the time and say, I've written a love story. And I said, no, you've written, or, or they say, I've written a romance. And I said, no, you've written a love story. Do you want to help our re our listeners understand the difference? Yeah, and, I, 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 and I'm willing to take the, the stones that get tossed at me because I'm absolutely convinced I'm right. So I'm okay with that. Um, Ron and I had a discussion about this, and I've had it with Blue Ridge people before. A love story, uh, at the end, there is great loss. Okay, so the relationship does not continue. Okay, yes. not in a not in a physical, tangible way left on this earth. Now, the affection continues, the feeling continues to the point where a lot of times the one of the characters, whichever one's left at the end. Um, won't remarry, won't date again, you know, goes, goes through life completely happy to be alone because they've mm -hmm. already had the love of their life and they're, they're still, they're whole. That was enough. That's enough wind in their sails to get them to the end. They don't need another push from somebody else. That's a love story. Um, yes. That's why I've contended all along that Nicholas Sparks writes love stories. He didn't write. Love yes. Yes. It, yes. It, <laughs> At the end of the relationship, somebody's going to, you know, if you're in, the joke is, if you're in the Nick, in a Nicholas Sparks love story, one of you is going to die. You know, you ain't going to make it out. Um, but Absolutely. That, He's always my example, too, of defining. So, And the reason, the reason I contend that love stories and love stories are, are much more powerful and do sell better than romances do. Romances are almost like appetizers right yeah but a love story you'll read that over and over again if it really resonates with you and the reason i contend that love stories work so well when they're done done right 
It is because we all know that there's an end coming for us. Okay. And we also know, at least those of us who are Christians, know that there was a great sacrifice at the end of Jesus' life. That was true love. Yes. He was his life for us that we might live. And that's what a relationship is. If two people are laying down their lives yeah. so that the other one can live, right? It's until mm -hmm. death does us part. Right? That's the, the problem, the vow we make. And so that's why love stories, I think, work so well when they're written, written, written well. When the character dies at the end, you go, well, I was hoping it wasn't going to happen. I was hoping this time I was going to be surprised and we're going to make it. But no, they didn't. <laughs> that's a love story. I, I agree. And, and Nicholas Sparks is a great example of that. Although I think his most recent two books actually have happy endings. Um, but the other endings of his novels where the char lead character dies or the one of the main characters die is they were satisfactory endings too, though. Um, because like you said, that person found a way to to go on and live life because they had once had a, a true love, true yeah. love, yeah. And, yeah. and the, difference, the difference between that type of love story and a romance, especially the Hallmark romances, is Hallmark ends with the wedding. Yeah. Uh, these people haven't, they haven't even gotten close to trying to put up with each other for the rest of their life. Exactly, yeah. And that's, and that's, so that's why it's a happy ending and that's why we keep reading them. It's because we only want to stop there because that's where the fun part was. You know, that was back in the fun. <laughs> we don't want to go back to that. <laughs> right, and, and we've talked earlier about the work involved in a real mature relationship. There's work involved, friendships, marriage, um, and even with our relationship with God. Um, it made me think of the love story, you know, with um, from years ago in the 70s. Um, oh, gosh, I can't believe Ryan O'Neill. And it'll come to me. Just keep talking. I'll remember the rest of it. Now, Anyways, remember. and it's she dies. Yeah. She dies. They're in college. They meet in Allie. college. Allie. What? Allie. Allie McGraw. Yes, Allie McGraw. Yes, uh, Ryan O'Neill and Ally McGraw. And um, I that movie is, it's a, it is an epic love story, but I hate the one line that people pull out and quote the most. Love means never having to say you're sorry. No. <laughs> That's the one line they pulled out and just like kept saying, yes, this is true love. No, I, nope, I disagree. <laughs> I well, think saying you're sorry. Go ahead. I think, I think the I think the implication in the scene was that she doesn't that he doesn't have to say it. She yeah. already knew it. That's that yes. was, okay. that's how the line works. Is you don't have to say it. I know that, and I know yeah, they are. That's you know, good. But it doesn't mean that it, that, a, that a sorry isn't necessary. If you're a guy, don't try that. Don't, don't try this. You know, at home and say, "Oh, I don't have to say I'm sorry." No, you better say you're sorry multiple times, <laughs> lots of times. So, well, yeah, and, and that's what, a good that's a good example because Ryan O'Neill's character Oliver gives <laughs> away everything. I mean, he loses his inheritance. He's coming from comes from a rich family. He gives away all of that yeah. in order to fall in love with somebody who's dying. Mm -hmm. right. And that's again that of me looking at it from a biblical standpoint. That's what Christ did. He came. <laughs> from heaven down here gave away everything yeah in order to die for me and i was already dying i'm still gonna die right mm -hmm. so it's not like it's gonna really pay off in the end but that's what love is i think right yeah yeah that's good so one of the other books i i recommend and i think i might have mentioned it through the last months but it's called relational intelligence and it's written by Dr. Darius Daniels and what's so good about it is he talks about you know how to deepen your relationships and love people better and so there's a nonfiction example and there are many many nonfiction examples because you and I've talked about this even as believers we need help getting things right 
we we need guidance like you said about going to the counselor you know we need help along the way and i think wisdom is knowing of course who to ask for the help um and but there will always be a need for relational books and marriage books uh it's a perennial like we talked about before and so love is definitely a topic that sells, that publishers are looking for, and screenwriters uh, uh, can find, uh, a ben, you know, uh, contract get contracts for, because love is um, how we're designed. Eddie, do you have any parting comments for our listeners today on well, this topic of love? Only in the sense that you gave me yet another writing ad, writing title idea that you and I should work on, and that is uh, the writing intelligence for dummies book. You know, <laughs> <laughs> for, for those of us who have no intelligence in relationships, and we need a, a dummies book to get the first five things down. And okay, I got it. Now, the only other <laughs> thing I would say about the romance part of it and the love part of it, it does sell, but the challenge is. Uh, to come up with a way of telling a story that's never been told before in mm. the romance or love formula. And that's tough to do. But if you can ever find a way to do that, um, then you then you all may have a hit on your hands because people are going yeah. to read that romance, but they don't want to read the same cliche. So they want right. to see something new. They want to see something new. Um, right. Fresh. The word they use, fresh. Give me something fresh. Um and I would like our listeners, my final thing is don't just think of love in uh, a full length nonfiction or fiction book. Think of an article that you could write. If you're a mother, write an article about the love relationship between a, a, a mother and her child. Or if you're married, you could say uh, our worst Valentine's Day ever, epic fail or something, you know, um, one time I got a uh, Christmas gift um, that that was definitely sent me to my room crying. And it was a video tape back then, VCR. And um, it was called Hips, Buttocks and Thighs, How to Lose Weight and Be Happy or something like that. And it was like, this was not my idea of a good gift to receive. <laughs> So you want to be careful what the gifts are, but okay. That was a rabbit trail. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I think I would throw it as a homework assignment, kind of to your point of, about mother and child. Think about, think about a relationship that you've got that's strained. can be a parent-child relationship. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll report with that. Let's say you've got a parent-child relationship that's strained, right? And if you, if you treat that as a romance formula, if you think of the romance formula, like you would a couple, and, right. you, and you find a way to write that story mentally in your head or maybe on paper, of how you would like to see this relationship become a romance with a happy ending, right? And write that, right? So you think if you think of a situation with a kid, maybe you've got a child that you, you don't agree on anything. You don't mm -hmm. agree on morals. You don't agree on beliefs. You don't agree on location. You don't believe on it, it, nothing. You have nothing in common, right? Except that you're related. And then write a romance for that, those two characters and how they come together. Um, because in the end, what you've done is you've created, created the vision that perhaps God will bless later on. Yeah, I like that. And, and so we have a problem. And the solution is how to solve that problem. The problem is, you know, all our, our relationships are not perfect, like you said. And the humor can come in when you say, um, you know, how not to love your, your mate, what gifts not to buy, you know, you could bring humor into the situation. And the thing about a good relationship is it survives all these uh, you know, fails. Yeah. And, and that's the, the love story are differing from the romance. The love story is the people finding a way to day after day, live in the trenches together and forgive 
and one another and know their heart. And when you know someone's heart, you can forgive them small uh, failures because they have bad days. They, you know, have weights on their heart that they're dealing with at work or in other relationships as well. So they're not going to always respond to you in perfect ways or or be be the best uh, friend. You know, they're going to let you down sometimes. But if you know their heart, then you're not going to throw out the relationship based on one fail or two yeah. or three even. You're going to stay with them because uh, relationships are worth saving and friendship is a valuable thing and marriages are valuable. So I would just encourage um, us to do the work personally, but also then in our writing, show the characters doing some work. Don't just make it all pretty. Yeah, so here's here's what I'll close with. This is a scene that just came to me. Older couple getting up Valentine's morning, heading off to work. He looks over at her as he leaves, says, same as last year, same as last year, she says. He goes and gets in his car and drives off. She gets in her car and drives off. She, 12 o'clock, she looks for the flowers. They don't show up. He looks for the car. There's not one on his desk. Somebody says something about Valentine's. Yeah, we're doing the same thing this year we did last year. It works for us. We've been doing this for years, right? That's the opening scene that's going down. And then at the end of the day, one of them finds out the other one's not around. Oh, Something has happened, tragically. They're, they're alive, but it's not looking good, right? And that's the inciting incident that turns it from a romance, you know, into a love story. But in the end, during the whole process, they have to learn to come back and rom romanticize each other and love each other back the way they used to, something like that. So you can steal that one if that sounds like something anybody wants to steal. Yeah. I like it. I'd read it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd watch it watch it on screen too so well yeah, happy yeah. valentine's everybody uh, yep happy valentine's day see ya see you next week